but I hope you'll all take a deep breath and go along with a, on a journey with me because we're going to build a community of readers one book at a time by decorating your library. Qua, you say? <laughs> Imagine your library. Think about it for a minute, what it looks like, how many rooms you have, what your spaces are, how you get in, how the people maneuver through your building. And now imagine it as a transit station. It's going to take you by plane, by bus, by train, anywhere you want to go. Where shall we go this summer? You can go anywhere you want. Normally, for those of you who have been seeing me talk about decorating the library over the last few years, you know that I give you some really concrete ideas on ways you can go. Uh -uh. This year, you got to do the work for yourself because there are so many places and themes and ways to interpret this destination that uh, I'm going to make you guys do all the work. So, I'll give you a couple of ideas, though. Choose visual icons that readers of all ages can recognize. So, how about Paris, City of Lights? Easy to create on any scale. You can buy stuff from the normal prom decorating places, or you can use photographs, or use your own imagination and creativity and craft supplies you have in the back of your office. Or how about Mount Fuji? Get your budding artist in on a mural painting and cover the entire hallway of your library with a butcher paper and over the course of the summer, build a mural. Or heat things up in the desert. And I highly recommend living dangerously and importing real sand into your decorations. Your maintenance guy will hate you for three months but it's worth every moment of his complaining because it's awesome. And it will make it very realistic. And trust me, I've done this before and paid the price and it was worth it. It's still worth it. Doug still gives me a hard time. This is a perfect year to think outside the box. So try and create a truly memorable and exotic cultural experience for your readers, which is why I didn't want to give you any specific ideas, I want to have you use your senses. For example, try using samples of fabric from around the world. There's all kinds of beautiful, gauzy, colorful, hand-printed, hand-painted fabrics that you can drape all kinds of places over your desk, uh, hang them from the ceiling. Um, I have a little tablescape over here on the side that has some things from all around the world and some different fabrics uh, that can inspire you to create an ambiance in your room that you might not normally think of. Go out of the box and spice up your room with unlit candles. Never say lit candles in a library. Uh, and oils and potpourri and there's all kinds of um, little uh, machines now that warm the oil and you could run those for a few minutes in the, the morning and they would put the scent into the room and then you can turn them off. But when the people come in, they're being bombarded with that sense, with all the smells from uh, a spice that they may never have encountered before. Get the staff and the customers in the mood. Choose a weekly destination and start each day with some music from that place. Another fun thing to do, we've been trying this off and on in the children's room for some of our programs. We just put in a CD and let it play and they really like it. And people from the other side of the room start wandering in to see what's going on. So that can increase attendance to your programming, but also expose some other people to um, ideas and programs that they might not have considered coming to. And if you really want to get sneaky, like with the sand thing, sneak into your room and play it on the loudspeaker when no one's looking. 
uh, are some of your staff reluctant to get in the summer mood? Bribe them. Go to places like Trader Joe's or World Market and bring back a few exotic taste treats for staff and customers. Just like with teens and tweens, to get them into the mood, you have to feed them. Nothing motivates teamwork better than a snack. And don't just stick with one style, swap them out each week. I know we have budgets, but a lot of these things, if you start shopping now, you can look for places on sale. Um, at World Market, when I bought a lot of these props, I signed up to be in their little club, and they send out uh, coupons and special deals every now and then. And a lot of time they have clearance stuff, so if you use your coupons and your special deals, uh, you can get a lot of this decorating stuff for really inexpensive prices. Try at least to have one time a week that you gather together at your exotic locale for a book talk or to have a staff member share their heritage or culture. Uh, one of the things I'm really excited about at my library is in our remodel we're um, building a tween zone and I'm actually going to make it a Moroccan hangout for the summer. So it'll have throw pillows and um, comfy places to sit down and look at a book or a magazine. And every week we're going to do a book club in there or some sort of a meeting. And you can have your staff come and talk to your book club that way too. Um, make sure you feature some of the books and materials that you carry in your library because ah, that's kind of the point. Uh, your library is your market square where all roads converge. Put some sand over there too. Create a new world using all these elements to transport your readers to a summer full of adventure. So make sure you use all of the senses to make it a great experience for all of your kids. And on that note, I would like to thank everybody for taking part in our uh, extravaganza today, and I'd like to say thank you myself for having six years of a lot of fun. Um, uh, it's going to be uh, well, weird for me not to be on the committee next year, but uh, I hope that I will see you guys somewhere down the road. <laughs>